the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts and minds be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I have to be honest, I didn't really prepare for this. But I also have to warn those who are visiting our members from the South. Right? This is a uh, time where you have to actually participate. If I ask a question, I expect an answer. So I will wait if I don't get one. Are you ever right, Clyde? <laughs> Are you always right? I have to say that this, this, this week, and when I say this week, I mean the last seven days, have been um, interesting, to say the least, for my family. It's been an, an up and down roller coaster of things and wondering what's going to happen next and how things are going to work out and how things are going to happen. Right? We all have these, these great ideas and plans for our lives and the way we think things are going to go. And tonight's lesson tells us that we're not supposed to what? I like that they're vibrant. We're not supposed to worry. Okay, honest question. How many of you worry? Those of you that aren't raising your hand, I remind you that you're in a church. <laughs> right? How many of us worry? And by worrying, what are we doing? We're not trusting God. We're not accepting faith. We're working ourselves up over things that may or may not actually happen. Right? Because in our minds, we come up with all of these scenarios of, and trust me, I can, I can tell you, like right now, my wife and my middle daughter aren't here. So in my mind, I'm thinking, they're going to hit a deer. They're going to be driving on the road. They're going to hit a deer. Or... And see, Clyde's like, don't do that. I mean, but that's the things that go through your mind, right? You think about these kind of things and you worry about what could happen. Right? But how many of us, by worrying, can add a single minute to our lives? None of us. How many of us, by worrying what could happen, is going to change the outcome of some future event? None of us. It might happen that way, but it's all by chance that it happened that way. It's not because you worried about it. Right? This past week I heard a song that I've probably heard before, but for whatever reason it seemed like every time I got in my car... And Caleb was on the radio that this song was playing. And it's the reason why I changed the hymn of the day to Blessed Assurance. Because the, the chorus of this song, or the ending of this song, is the chorus to the hymn that we're going to sing when I'm done here in a few moments. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his glory. I, I lost it there for a minute. But the, the chorus is, This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. And the song that I heard this past week which uses that is a song by Big Daddy Weave called My Story. And it starts out, with, if I told you my story, you would hear hope that wouldn't let go. And if I told you my story, you would hear love that never gave up. And if I told you my story, you would hear life, but it wasn't mine. You see, all of us could worry as much as we wanted to about everything and anything in the world. But by doing that, we're not helping ourselves or helping those that we're worried about. But by understanding the message that we're given tonight in Matthew chapter 6, I believe it was. Probably wrong. No, I'm right. Oh, good. <laughs> Every now and then I do get right, so... That if we believe this story, that we are more important than the birds of the air and the flowers of the field, that God loves us so much that he gave his only son so that each and every one of us could live a life in relationship with him. 
then if I tell you my story, I can't possibly tell you my story without telling you about the wonders of God and the wonders of Jesus Christ, my Savior, right? If I could speak, then let it be of grace that is greater than all my sins, of when justice was served and where mercy wins, of the kindness of Jesus that draws me in. Oh, to tell you my story is to tell you of him, right? Because Jesus paid it all. So each and every one of us has more than enough to be thankful for in this time. This past week, I didn't, wasn't sure what I was going to be thankful for. Because sometimes I don't know what's going to happen. But even in those dark times, you can know and understand and rely on the simple fact that Jesus holds your hand, and walks you through the valleys, and in that we all have been blessed. Because Jesus loves you more than any flower in the field or any bird in the air. Because you are his creation and you are blessed by him. So blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Is the phrase that all of us can say. And know that the only way to tell your story is to tell the world about the love of Christ who died for each and every one of us.